Hey ladies, hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. So one of the videos and topics that I wanted to talk about um, as we kind of close out the week and I figured Sunday would be a perfect day to do this is talking about, you know, do you have kind of that weekend eating, drinking or night out um, remorse the next day? Like, are you feeling the next day where like you're, you feel super overwhelmed, you feel super guilty if you even just were off your plan a little bit? And what I want to do is kind of help you alleviate some of those mindset blocks and barriers that we have um, kind of about eating out and kind of food freedom and all of that stuff. So I used to be the same way. I used to have massive, massive guilt anytime I even had like a treat meal or even if I was just, you know, out with some friends and I maybe drank and ate too much um, or, you know, I made a bad decision, whatever it might be. Um, I used to be that way. I would <clears throat> the next day not eat anything because I felt like that I needed to try to decrease those calories like out of my body and I would go do a massive amount of cardio because in my brain I used to think that like I needed to do cardio every single day and I needed to do cardio basically to punish myself anytime I had too many calories because that's how you burn the most calories which isn't true um a lot of times it can be really hard for us to kind of get out of that mindset of like bad day of eating equals cardio. So what I wanted to hop on today and is kind of break through the entire weekend and help you all to kind of start just taking that first step into really believing in yourself, having that food freedom on the weekends, allowing yourself some slack here and kind of figuring out some things along the way if it gets to the point where it's a little out of control. So Excuse me, I'm drinking my kombucha here on tap. Love this stuff. Could drink it every day. I usually do. Um, all right, so first step is, you know, we kind of got to backtrack here, like, to Friday night. So you're, you probably got invited out. You got invited to go to dinner or it's date night or whatever it might be for you. And you're like, okay, awesome, cool. I'm trying to be more conscious, conscious of my health. What should I eat? And the first thing I want you to do is stop and say, okay, you know what, like, everything's going to be okay, don't let yourself get off stressed out about it, because the moment that you start getting stressed up, as we talked about earlier this week with our sleep challenge, um, your hormone levels rise, cortisol levels rise, and you start to get super um, stressed out about it, so... Think about, okay, you know, what are my options? Are we going to a Mexican restaurant? I'm going to share with you all some of personally what I order at certain places because I thought that that might be helpful. So if I'm going to a Mexican restaurant, I love chips and guac and chips and salsa. Um, you know, I could eat chips and queso like there was, you know, no end, but I save that for kind of a special occasion. So... For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enjoy, um, you know, some chips, but just because they're unlimited does not mean that you need to continue to eat the baskets as they come out to you. You can tell them after one basket or two if you're splitting it with people like, hey, you know, I don't need any more. Please don't bring that back out. Then what I do is I order all of my food without any other basically carbohydrates in them because I had enough probably with the chips because I usually eat a couple extra. Um... So I order fajitas um, in the vegetables, and I'm like, don't bring me any rice, don't bring me any beans. Uh, if they have steamed vegetables, another like steamed vegetable option, I will get that. And that is what my plate looks like. I don't ask for all the other stuff because I'm the type of person, if it's in front of me, like I'll probably take a bite and then a bite turns into five more bites. So know yourself and just ask for it without it. Like you can ask for the lettuce, the guac, and the pico, and just say, don't bring me any rice or beans. You're still going to feel full, and you're still going to get the experience, whether you eat everything that's given to you or not. A lot of times, we've had this, like, mindset in the past that, like, oh, because it's there, we have to eat it, or, oh, because it's free, or, oh, because I can get this much. Like, you don't have to eat a certain thing. Like, you do not do not have to do something that you don't want to do. We are all grown women, and we can make our own decisions here. So choose it. Like that way you're still getting the experience. You can still have a margarita. You can still do all of this stuff and still feel, you know, kind of at ease. Now, depending upon if I'm like really treating myself, I'll have like a frozen margarita. Um, but otherwise, if I'm like, okay, like I just need to stay dialed in and this isn't like some all out big, you know, fun thing, uh, then I will get one that's like freshly squeezed or on the rock. So that way there's not a lot of the added sugar and stuff in there. Um, you know, if I'm going to a Chinese restaurant, Another example, I will ask for the steamed chicken and vegetables with the sauce on the side, and I'll drizzle a little bit on there. 
I usually don't get rice because there's plenty with the um, chicken or whatever meat you're getting and the vegetables. Um, you know, if I go to a burger place, I, I won't get the bun. I can't tell you the last time that I had a bun on a burger and I survived. I love french fries. Like, those and tortilla chips are my thing. And so I will get french fries and I will get a bun without a burger. And I still feel full. I still feel fine. I love it and it feels great. Um, so you just have to kind of think about like what's a healthier step that I can take? You know, how can I still enjoy all my favorite things? And so asking something open faced without the bun, um, on a bed of lettuce, whatever it might be, is super helpful in those situations. You do not always have to order a salad where you go. Um, another tip too, asking for a box, like right when you start eating, people might look at you like you're crazy, but um, you know, if I put it away, into a box and I put it in a bag like I'm not going to go pick back out at it again um, but that's just a few things to kind of think about a few different options but check the menu before you go somewhere like know what your options are and if you're nice and you ask in a very nice way people are you know pretty easy going about making substitutions and if you don't feel comfortable doing that just say like hey I have an allergy um, is it possible to know like what you make this with or like what the sides are anything like that and you know in this day and age people are really afraid about liability so hey they are pretty easy going when you say that hey I have a gluten allergy um, can you can I have this without the bun or whatever it is so pretty easy option um, again I know it's kind of like lying a little bit but you know, sometimes it just is what it is and you got to do what you got to do. Um, so the other thing is drinks. I would highly recommend if you have been struggling to get to the results and you're noticing that you either probably consume a lot of alcohol, um, even on the weekends or, you know, throughout the week, watch what drinks you're having. I would ditch the beer, whether you love it or not. Ditch that. Um, be careful of how much wine you're consuming throughout the week. Try to save it for the weekends. And if you're ordering drinks, you know, order. If you're making a drink, I love kombucha with some alcohol in it. Um, but then I also love, oh gosh, a lot of different things. I love Tito's with like a splash of lime. Um, you can do a splash of like cranberry juice. I just want to get the whole thing of cranberry juice in there because then you're a uh, starting to get a lot of extra sugar just watch it because one you're not going to feel shitty the next day and two you're not going to load on a ton of extra calories by drinking so be wary of those but know like if, when you have alcohol in your system and you think that it's a good idea to go try to do a bunch of cardio to basically offset that you're not doing anything for yourself because your body your body can't burn fat when alcohol is in it like you can work out for two hours and maybe you might feel like you sweat it out, but you're not burning body fat at that time because it is impossible when you have alcohol in your system to burn body fat. So that's why I say try to save it for the weekend. I know, you know, there's some nights where we come home and we're going to have a glass of wine. It is what it is. Don't beat yourself up about it, but just kind of wrap, start to wrap your mindset around like what are healthier choices? What are healthier decisions I can make? How can I start making these changes? And so, um, you know, you have to kind of understand what your trigger is. If the trigger for you is the weekend and every time that you do a challenge, every time that you start a new fitness program, you always, 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 always fall off on the weekend. I guarantee it's because there's a trigger that on the weekend you are free and it's not really the weekend. It's the fact of feeling free. It's the fact of the social life. It's all this, all these different things and you have to figure out different ways that you can First of all, know that trigger and know when it's coming. And second of all, start to back off from that trigger and be like, what's a healthier option that I can have? And um, you can always suggest different things to your friends. Like you can suggest going for coffee. Um, you know, I don't want to ever make you feel like a hermit or anything like that. But you have to choose sometimes what's best for you because not everybody in this world is looking out for your best interest. And that might be a hard pill to swallow and kind of like a wake up call. But just because somebody else is doing something does not mean that you have to do something be powerful in your choices be powerful in what you're doing and know that it is okay to say no or even if you do go out it's a very sobering experience like to not you know consume a ton of alcohol and be in those situations you're not gonna die if you want to go out tomorrow and do the same thing it's still gonna be there that's what I did a lot when I was trying to change my mindset around food, eating clean, enjoying myself and all of that stuff is that it's going to be there tomorrow. And so there's sometimes where I approach a situation and there's cookies out and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, a cookie. And I eat one, maybe two. And then there's sometimes where I'm like, I'm just, it's, you know, it's there. It's great. It's a store 
box cookie. It's honestly not that good. Like, do I really want it? Yes or no? Probably not. Am I going to eat it? No. But, like, I don't ever put the limit on myself that I can't have something. And that's something I want you all to think about. So, like, don't put the limit on that cookie or that cupcake or that drink or that meal out that you can't have it look at it as it look at it as an option look at it as like is this going to feel my body is this going to do something good for me do I really want this or do I just want it because it's there and like I said some days you're going to have it and that's okay and some days you're not going to want it and like that's where food freedom really comes in that's how you know Survive, not surviving, but really thriving through the weekends is going to help you feel so much better when you don't put so much pressure on food and when you don't put food as the bad guy or you don't label things as bad, good, can't have, have. If you kind of just kind of break down those limits and be like, you know, not as healthy for me. Am I going to have it today? Sure, but it, the more you balance it out. Um, the better off you will be, the better you will start developing a more positive relationship with food. Because a lot of times what happens is the next day, we have eating remorse or we have drinking remorse or we're like, oh God, like I ate too much last night or maybe had a couple too many drinks. Um, not going to go into like the decision piece of it, but you know, you kind of have these like, uh, like guilt feelings. Now, what you have to kind of train your brain to do is to stop looking at those as guilty things and say, hey, it's okay that I had that. It is what it is. Next, like, what maybe did I eat too much because I didn't eat enough throughout the day? Did I not get enough water in? Did I not get a workout in? So I was just kind of feeling blah. And take note of that. Take note of how you're feeling before you make your decisions and then after. But do not beat yourself up because you will continue to have this awful relationship with food and, you know, fun times out and social things. And you will chase your tail around in a circle like Ziggy does every day. Um... So don't do that to yourself because that's how you're going to get those lifelong results. For me, um, personally, this took time. You really have to kind of get into the woo-woo part of your brain and really say like, hey, this is how I'm going to make a difference. You know, tonight I'm going to take it a little bit easier and, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll go and, you know, do whatever. So like you just have to kind of find that balance and it's more than just like, turning yourself into a hermit and being like, oh, well, I can't do anything, so I'm just not going to do anything, or like, how am I going to explain this to people? Don't explain it to people. If it gives you so much anxiety to have to explain what you're doing or why you're not choosing something to people, you can be sneaky and, you know, get a soda water with a lime in it and just ask the person not to put any alcohol in there. Like, you can do little things like that if that stresses you out too much to just say, I'm not drinking because then, you know, people are like, why aren't you drinking or why aren't you eating this or whatever. Uh, but always bring a snack with you beforehand too. But I learned after figure competing and everything else that, like, one, things will still be there. Two, don't limit yourself from things that much because life is too short. But three, choose what is taking you closer to your goals every day. Because if it's week three and week three is when you always start to fall off the bandwagon, you need to say to yourself, what makes me always fall off the bandwagon, always kind of dive back out and really just go bingy, um, you know, through week number three or week number four. And it's probably because you put this mindset on that you've limited yourself for so long. And then you get that one opportunity out and you're like, I'm going to eat this and that and this. And then you like spiral back down and you're like, oh, it's too like, it's too late. It is never too late. It is okay to have those days because we are human and we need to live. And we need to have some friggin' ice cream and a whole thing of pizza sometimes. But then the next day we choose better the next day does not mean that you have to continue to eat like shit just because the day before you did so I get a little preachy on this because I have hurt my metabolism I have hurt my body in the past by binging what out what I have ate um, and all that kind of stuff and so I can share with that very uh, knowledgeably after a long time of eating disorders and uh, other mindset stuff that you can do this. Do not put the limits on your food because you will go into a deep, dark hole that is really, really hard to dig yourself out of. So um, don't have the guilt. And then, you know, the next day, do some things that are good for your body. If you're like, I can't really work out right now because I'm just not feeling it, start to do something for a few minutes. Go for a walk. Um, drink a green juice. Those things will cure your life. And, you know, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a $6 green juice. Like, make something at home. Fuel your body with stuff that's good for you. Um, 
Because your body's craving sugar, it's craving carbs, it's craving crap, and you got to put some good stuff into there, otherwise you're just going to continue to feel like shit. So green juice, uh, move your body, have a protein shake, that's always usually something good, and it's cold, so it usually tastes good too. Uh, I would stay away from Gatorade. I used to be a cereal, like, unless I'm super, super, you know, had a rough, fun, crazy night, then I will have some Gatorade, but drink some um, BCAs the next day. It'll save your life. I promise. BCAs, I recommended them in a couple posts below this, but check them out. They're great for the next day. They're great for your workouts, but they're also great for hangovers, if I'm being completely honest. So, um, you know, kind of think about those little things that you can do to make yourself feel good. If you don't feel like cooking, maybe go to a healthy place near you and treat yourself to something, um, whatever it is. But take some time this week to think about like what foods do you put labels on like what foods do you say are good and bad what foods on the weekend do you notice yourself kind of binge eating on and how do you feel after those how do you feel before the weekend how do you feel after the weekend how do you feel on Monday so think about those things start to wrap your head around a few different things here and know that you can do anything that like you want to do in these next well it's like four weeks technically together um but remember why you started this. Remember why you signed up for it. Why you pushed your best foot forward and said, like, I am going to do this because you're not going to fail. You're going to continue to get better every single day. And this is going to be something where you can actually have food freedom, have a life, and do everything too. So hopefully that gave you all a little bit of clarity, some ideas for the weekends. If you have questions about the weekends or different things or anything like that, let me know. But again, it is good to have that one day where you do have like a little treat or you go a little bit kind of, you know, off your plan and enjoy yourself because that's going to reset your metabolism. Your body's going to say what the hell is going on and it's going to burn through that even quicker. I personally, when I, um, Side note before I, ha before I hop off of here, when I have kind of my one meal every week, like a burger and french fries or whatever it is, um, I will actually weigh less the next day because after time I've trained my metabolism and this took a while um, to basically where I will weigh less because my body is trying to fight through all of that and reset itself. So a little fun tip that takes some time, that takes a lot of um, really dialing yourself in throughout the week and being on your game. So let me know if you have any questions and I am going to go make my grocery list. So I will talk to you all soon. Goodbye.